Riften Callips, unflinchingly loyal, fearsome warrior, secret cinnamon roll. But the way he treats Maxi often gives new readers of Under the Oak Tree pause. Is this guy just really protective of his wife, or does his treatment edge overboard and into a dangerous territory? Time to find out in this episode of Under the Oak Tree Explained. Even though we all wish, at least some of the time, that we could live inside UOT, we have to remember that it is a story about a medieval-style fantasy world without the same beliefs and values of our own modern day. We 1,000% support Maxie in her journey to become a stone-cold badass, but this is unusual for the world she lives in, where women are basically useless, second-class citizens, except for the rare exceptions, like Agnes, who is a mage and a princess. The starting perspective of a man in this world is that women should stay home, perform their marital duties, and raise children. So, when Riften freaks out when he learns that Maxie has been working in the infirmary and using healing magic, we understand that his response, wanting to control what Maxie can or can't do, is quite normal within the UOT world. I was the only person in this castle who had no idea what my wife was doing the whole day. How could you do that behind my back when you know very well how much I worry for you? You promised me last time, remember? You promised that you wouldn't push yourself. Is Riften intending to be controlling, though? It's more like Riften, as tactless as he may be, is trying his best to persuade Maxie to stop. He's flying into a fit because he is mortally terrified of anything happening to Maxie. We think the heart of the issue is right here. Why is Riften so overprotective to the level of obsession? It is my duty to worry. Rifton said with an edge to his voice. You are the one person in this world I must worry about. Our theory is that it all began when the couple were both children. Twelve-year-old Rifton found six-year-old Maxie alone in the forest, attacking a lizard monster that had killed her dog. What? Yes, you heard that right. She was attacking a monster with a tree branch. In the novel, it's described that Riften had never felt as horror-stricken before, and after he deals with the monster, his first reaction is to feel angry. His heart pounded, and his back was drenched in cold sweat. Had he been allowed, he would have bent the girl over his knee and given her a good spanking for acting so recklessly. But then he turns around to see Maxie passed out on the ground, and even in full panic mode, he saves Maxie's life by sucking out venom from the monster bite on her arm. So Riften witnessed little Maxie almost getting killed right in front of his eyes. If anything, this is a traumatizing experience. What's more, a reminder, Maxie actually tried to fight the monster herself. With a tree branch. What? Riften passed his judgment on Maxie. She's unimaginably reckless, and he can't trust her with her own safety. You shouldn't have been there in the first place. You should never, ever put yourself in danger. Do you understand? I felt my blood run cold the moment I saw you out there. And that prejudice, coupled with Riften's other traumas, is reinforced again and again after they're married. For instance, once Maxie overexerts herself healing, draining her mana, she becomes so sick that she actually throws up on Riften. And then again, she faints after saving the castle of Ethelin, with heartbreaking consequences to herself and her relationship. No spoilers here, but just a warning, you will need a thousand tissues for a certain part of book one. <laughs> Imagine you have a trauma relating to your loved one, and you have to relive that horror every time they act like a normal functioning person. Unfortunately, therapy doesn't exist in Under the Oak Tree, so Riften needs to find a way to deal with this. In the end, he needs to realize that Maxie isn't still that little six-year-old child who fought a monster. With a tree branch. Riften's protective instincts converge into controlling or suffocating territory at times. What Riften has to learn over the course of the story is that the right thing to do is listen to Maxie, not to his fears. Riften needs to help Maxie learn to be prepared and able to fend for herself, not unilaterally decide that he'd give up anything, even his own life, for her safety. He has to work together with her as an equal partner in decision-making, accepting that Maxie is an independent human being capable of making her own decisions, whether he agrees or not. And communicating about those decisions and desires is what makes an adult relationship work. 
What do you think about our relationship analysis? Comment below to let us know what we missed. And don't forget to leave us more ideas on what else needs to be explained in the UOT universe. As always, like this video and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating UOT content that you will love.